there. My name's Kirsten. This is the Paper Knits Podcast, episode number 10. I'm a knitter in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and today I'm going to show off everything that I knit in 2023. Except actually not, because I'm just going to show the sweaters that I knit. I was looking back through my notes on my Ravelry and then like on my patterns and stuff, looking back on all the things that I knit this year. It felt like a very, um, it's like my journal, I think, thinking about what I, what was going on in my life during that time while I was knitting that thing. And yeah, I felt really um, reflective, I think, for me to like look back on all the things that I have made and in this past year. Um, but then also as I was going through, <laughs> I, was like, I was getting to the end, I was like, okay, I don't need to write notes about this. It's fine. I'll just wing it. I was like getting bored my own, my own things. And so <laughs> I don't want to make other people bored of my things. Decided to scratch off all of the like other things. I'm just gonna talk about my sweaters. So I knit 26 projects this year. Um, I didn't look to see what I knit the year before. I have no idea. Um, for me, it felt like a lot of knitting. Half of that was sweaters. And so that was a lot. Um, 13 sweaters. And I started podcasting in May. Um, I guess I recorded it in April. It took me a couple weeks to get it posted. My first one went up May 1st. So and I had a lot of knitting those first few months of the year. And so there's going to be a lot of things today that if you've been watching my podcast, there'll be new things for you to see. And then there's also um, a finished object at the end, too, I guess, that I haven't shown on the podcast before. So if you can wait till the end to get some of the new things, too, then yeah. I thought I always like to hear, too, about like if people wear the things or not, if how the yarn's been holding up. Um, if they would do anything differently the next time, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I made some notes about, about those kinds of things too. So, yeah, part of it, I guess, is, like I said, my knitting is, looking back on my knitting has been like a journal for me. Um, thinking about what was going on in my life at that time. Um, if you've watched any of my other episodes, you know that it's been a really shitty year. Um, and knitting is what has helped me, not, not the only thing. Knitting is a big part of what has helped me cope this year. And especially the early half, like the first half of the year, there was a lot of knitting to cope with life. Yeah, I feel weird like rehashing it every podcast, but it's like weird that if people don't know and I'm like, don't like being like, oh, it was such a hard year and I'm gonna be so vague about it. Um, so the very like Coles Notes version if you can do that for a tragedy is that my daughter passed away last December at one week old and uh yeah it's been a really shitty year we just had her birthday and like the one year anniversary of her death and which just feels so bizarre um and knitting has been such a important part of my year part of why well like the big, like a really big reason about why I started my podcast this year is because something that I'd wanted to do and was just letting fear keep me from doing it. And I decided, nope, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna do the things that we want to do. And one of those things was starting my podcast. And I love to knit. It's been a very important part of my life for a long time in terms of just enjoyment and also my mental health. Um, and then especially so this year, I'm so grateful that I've had knitting to help me survive this year. And for people who don't knit, they're like, okay, cool. But for people who get it, they like really get it. And so I found so much of that through this sharing about my knitting on the internet. And I'm so grateful for the people who I've watched this year and kind of affirmed that for me that they've also, you know, knitting has also helped them cope and it feels like such a gift to have this thing that is like good for my brain good for my body interesting engaging challenging and I get to make beautiful things at the end of it like it's just like what what could be better than that so my therapist says that the like rhythmic repetitive motion whether that's like through exercise like with running or with um that's, I don't exercise. <laughs> I know there's more exercising than running. Um, 
that's just the example that I have in my head, the like very repetitive motion of running. Um, but then also like that knitting with your hands, that like back and forth in your brain, the like bilateral movement, whatever, it's good for um, processing shitty things that have happened. Um, it's regulating to our nervous system. And uh, I have the stamp of approval from my therapist to continue knitting. Um, and I know from hearing from so many other people just like how helpful of a thing it has been in their lives. Also, um, just dealing with life. So, okay, let's do it. I can already tell how messy my hair is gonna get doing this. Um, also, so I've been growing out my hair. So interesting to see back from like my first episode in May. It takes a real long time to grow out hair. I have grown it out from a pixie cut many times. I usually get it to about this length, maybe a little bit longer, and then I chop it all off again because it drives me nuts. Um, but when your hair is short and then something bad happens, I guess you could buzz your hair, like you could like shave your head, but you can't like do the drastic thing where you like dramatically change your hairdo. And so I've been, I very slowly grow it out instead. Anyways. Okay, this is my first finished object of the year. Um, this is the, it's called the Grerip, I want to say, Grerip Chunky by Camilla Vad. And I started this in December, but I didn't finish it till January, so I'm counting this as 2023 finished object. Um, this had been on my knit list for quite a long time. I knit it in the same colors as one of the samples. Um, different yarn, but like I, that's how I chose my colors and I just I like needed to have this sweater in my wardrobe um, and so I love the finished object the um, process of it was not the best experience ever um, but I I like how it turned out in the end um, so this is knit bottom up and then raglan shaping at the top all over color work um, I loved how just like the color work kind of shifted, the like how the, all the different colors played in together all throughout it. It's five different colors. It's the original pattern is knit with um, sport weight held double, so it knits up to a bulky gauge. I knit mine up in Hills Vogue Blaine, which is their bulky base, and then in Tinned, which is their DK base, which I want to say I held double, but I can't remember that actually now at this moment. And then Registario Vovo, so I could get all the colors that I wanted. And so I very carefully pieced together my palette. Um, I had ordered all the yarn from a shop that doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. It's called Farm to Cable Yarns. And I'm pretty sure they were based in Ontario. And they carried a lot of like European wool, um, a lot of like non-super wash, stuff that was harder to find in Canada. Um, I loved their shop and so I had ordered this from them previously and yeah I I have since found other places to buy that yarn in Canada which I needed to because I ran out of yarn um, near the end of this sweater so um, one of the things about this sweater is that it is not size inclusive and Camilla Vad seems resistant to expanding her size range um, and I don't like that vibe very much. Um, there was also like random mistakes in the pattern. Some of it just like, some of the lines just like were never actually translated to English. <laughs> like there were just some like weird kind of, not what you would expect from like a very popular designer um, with a, like this is a popular pattern. So I didn't, I didn't love that. Um, I think like style of writing is also just different. So this pattern is like, it does not hold your hand. Um, it's kind of like cast on this many stitches and then increase evenly. And so like, that's fine. I know how to do that, but it's like, could you just please tell me what color I'm supposed to knit right here? It's like increase in pattern. Um, and so I ended up writing out the charts like using Pattern Genius, which I often do anyways to like make sure that I can, like I rewrite the charts and the colors that I'm using. So this one I was using the same colors, but. Anyways, I, I made up a chart for the sleeves so I could like match the increases. When I got to the decreases for the raglan, I just kind of like figured out what was going to be next. It was easier when you're decreasing. When you're increasing, it's like you have to go back to like 
the beginning of the, um, or like the end of the pattern to like build the pattern onto the beginning of the round again kind of thing. And that was too much for my brain um, to do on its own. So I made myself a chart and I found the proportions like a little bit weird in the sweater. Um, and so I ended up lengthening it. I used a different size chart than what I was supposed to um, so that I could have like extra length on it. Um, because of how like, because of the all over color work, it wasn't easy to just like, oh, I'll just add more length here. Um, and so I just used a different size then to, um, to do that. I knit a size three and which was supposed to have like six inches of positive ease on me. This does not have six inches of positive ease on me and the sleeves are quite tight. Um, and I'm happy with the fit. I tried it on a lot as I went. I added some short row shaping on the back. Somewhere along the way, I ran out of the dark blue. And so I, I think I was like, I was so close to being done. And I knew I wanted the like chunky, it's like a double folded um, neckband. And like I said, I bought this from a shop that had since closed. And so I was like, what do I do? Um, and this was, so I, I cast this sweater on, I like swatched for this sweater in December, uh, like December 15th. Um, and then it like promptly went on hold cause I had a baby four days later. Um, and then in that like weird in between time of like between Christmas and New Year's is like when I started knitting it again, I knit whole sleeve like on New Year's Eve. Um, and then early then in that first week of January, I like zoomed through the rest of it, but then I ran out of yarn. And so, um, I found another shop that carried what I needed. They had two different dye lots of this dark navy blue. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm buying both of them. And so I bought two skeins in the meantime, like immediately cast on another sweater, which I'll get to. And, uh, thankfully it came, you know, it was just fine. It matched great. I could finish on. And so I finished it January 14th. It was probably like mostly like two weeks of knitting. Um, it's, it's like 12 stitches in four, over four inches. So it's like obviously bulky and that makes it go quickly. Um, and the color work was like very engaging. Um, and so that kind of zoomed along as well, but also I just was like, all I was doing was knitting. Looking back, I am kind of surprised that I had the capacity to like knit a color work sweater and then be modifying the pattern at that time. Um, so overall I'm like pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, one thing that I found after wearing it a couple times is that my bottom hem was really flaring out. Um, I am wearing my pajama pants. Um, the bottom hem was flaring. And so I ended up adding a little bit of elastic just like around it and didn't like tighten it really at all. I just like threaded some elastic thread through the ribbing a couple times on the inside and it just like brought it in just ever so slightly and then it's been just fine ever since. Something I've learned about myself is that I don't love color work sleeves because I like, I have to be able to pull my sleeves up. And I can't do that when they're color work because they're quite, they don't have a lot of elasticity. And so I end up like folding up my cuffs um, which is fine, but it's like if I have to wash my hands or whatever, if I'm just like doing things that need my hands. Um, and so then the cuffs kind of stretch out a little bit, I find, but um, I don't think I've ever reblocked this again. So, and if I do, I might try and give myself just a little bit more ease in the arms. But overall, I'm really happy with this. I do have another one of Camilla Vad's patterns. I'm not going to knit it. Um, love this sweater. I love the um, product of this sweater. Um, can't necessarily recommend it, but okay. Next up, actually next up is a sweater that I made for my husband that I'm not going to put on. So I'm going to keep this on and just show this one off. So sweater number two, this is the Dustland sweater by Stephen West. So this is a top down yoke sweater all over texture. Um, DK worst, worsted weight um, sweater. This one I knit up in 
a yarn that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so a local yarn shop here in Edmonton was called River City Yarns and they had a yarn base called Epic, um, which was um, Peruvian wool, I think. And it's one of my favorite yarns and um, they closed in early 2023. So I had though ordered a whole bunch of it um, on like sales at the end of last year. And so, and again, at the time, somehow I was able to like plan out two sweater projects. I had this idea in my mind that I wanted my husband and I to have matching sweaters. And so, and texture for some reason, I wanted texture. And so this was one of the projects or the patterns that I'd picked out and like what I had used to like base my like, yarn purchases on when I ran. So I had bought this and was able to get the yarn right away because it was just here in Edmonton. And then um, when I ran out of yarn for this sweater, I was like, well, can't not knit, so better cast on a new sweater. And so this one got cast on on January 2nd and um, ran out of yarn for this sweater too. <laughs> so, um, which I think I probably, uh, it's a little bit, it's a bit long and the, like the yoke is a little bit too deep and then it's also a little bit too long. And so I probably could have like, in theory, I probably could have like, I could have ripped it all back and like had enough yarn. Um, like I don't think that the pattern like was not giving me enough, you know, um, I just think I knitted a bit too long, but I wasn't about to rip it all the way back. Right. He like my husband tried it on for the first time and I was like, how's it fit? And he's like, oh yeah, like, you know, it's feeling a little bit, you know, bulky in the underarms. I was like, okay, that's too bad. I am not fixing that. <laughs> I was like already knit the entire body. Um, but I ran out of yarn on the second for the second sleeve. And so promptly ordered some more yarn from the store. I was thinking like, hey, it was like two weeks later. Um, it's like, surely it'll be the same. My mom, who is not a knitter, was like, oh, don't you have to worry about like the like dye lot and stuff of the yarn? I was like, oh no, it'll be fine. And yeah, we like drove over to the store, got the yarn and like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh no, this isn't gonna be the right color. And so it was just like a little bit lighter. It's a different dye lot, it was a little bit lighter, but enough that you could like really tell. And so I was super bummed um, about that. And you know, like the, the um, like owners of the yarn store were like super helpful, like gave me just some different ideas, like what I could do and like, you know, like fading in the other color or um, like shortening the body, shortening the sleeves, like whatever. And if it had just been a sweater for me, I might've just done that to just like cropped it a little bit. I just don't feel like my husband would have appreciated a cropped sweater. So what I ended up doing though, is that I scoured Ravelry and found somebody who had the right dye lot in stash, sent them a message on Ravelry, asked them, hey, I need one more ball of this yarn in this dye lot. I have this one in this other dye lot. Like, can I, can I swap you? And she was like, sure, great. I'll pop it in the mail. Um, and I was like, great, I'll pay for your shipping. And she's like, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, no, please let me pay for your shipping. Like this yarn is like, $12 a ball. It costs more than that to ship it from, I think she was in Vancouver maybe because Canada post sucks. Um, anyways, just like save the day. I was able to finish the sweater. Um, and my husband wears it a lot. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, it's a bit long. Um, and the yoke is a bit deep. It does, the yoke actually does match kind of what it looks like on Stephen West photos. And the arms are also quite long on it. Um, and anyway, so it's, I think it's turned out what it was supposed to be, but, but I think to make it like fit my husband the best way, then like maybe I would have shortened those things a little bit, but yeah, he wears it a lot. And I'm just like so happy every time he, every time he wears it, um, it's not super wash wool, but it's very soft. Um, it's pilled a little bit, but not too bad. I think I've depilled it once. Maybe I feel more worried about depilling things on texture because feels like more things to snag, but um, yeah. Anyways, overall, very happy with this knit. Um, by the end of it, I was like pretty bored of the um, the different texture sections. It's kind of like, I think there's four, maybe different patterns throughout. And by the time I got to the end, I was like, I'm not knitting this again for us to have matching sweaters. I'm gonna find a different one for me. Um, and I did. Um, 
but I it was a great knit for him so yeah that's the Dustland sweater so this one I cast on January 2nd cast off January 27th and that was with me the running out of yarn buying new yarn from the store getting some sourcing yarn from a random person on Ravelry and uh I'm gonna have to finish that all in January okay now my dress form I can wear a sweater I'll keep swapping it out here so this was my version of the textured sweater then that I made for myself that I cast on after I ran out of yarn for my husband so this one was cast on January 12th I finished it February 4th um so that's three sweaters that I finished in the span of just over a month <laughs> again I said all I did was knit um this is the Boulevardier by Thea Coleman this is my favorite sweater I love this sweater so much I'm so happy with it it I love it just I just I love it um I have mentioned throughout the year on my podcast about like oh looks like my very favorite sweater that I've knit that's this one <laughs> so yeah this one was so yeah when I decided my husband's sweater's over here when I decided not gonna knit two dustland sweaters wanted another texture sweater also decided you know what I want to knit a sweater in pieces and so I searched for sweater in pieces that had texture so this is also in the River City Yarns Epic um, this is the color marine blue. I'm going to try and go closer to the camera so you can see it. It's hard. It's like, it's very hard to pick it up on camera. It has the most wonderful, like subtle variation in it. Um, just like a hint of purple kind of like throughout it. And it was, yes, it's just very lovely. It's very me. The sweater is knit flat in pieces and then seamed bottom up drop shoulder um and I love it I just I I love how it fits it's the perfect comfy like throw over kind of sweatshirt the texture was like very interesting to knit there's a row of bobbles that like took me an hour I think each row to like to do those which was a pain in the butt but um they're like they're pretty subtle and so I like them I don't love bobbles otherwise but they're like pretty subtle ones and um I think because it was in pieces I don't know why I think it, it's just like it felt very engaging like knit the front and the back and then I did the sleeves two at a time which I think was good because I think if I had like done them back to back that would have felt really boring um but yeah I just am so happy with it um the I think the only modification that I made is that I I added kind of some short rows in the back um for like the back shoulder area just to like bring that up a little bit in the pattern she specifically mentions like why she did not add short rows and I think maybe says like you can add them if you want but like doesn't tell you how so I think I must have found a I think I must have found like a tutorial online or something um because I hadn't knit a sweater like this before I knit a cardigan in pieces so that'd be pretty similar um in terms of like construction and whatever but anyways I think that was the only modification I made it just like raised the back up just ever so slightly which I needed and um yeah other than that like it was such a great pattern I was the first I don't think I'd heard of Thea Coleman before it was the first pattern I've knit of hers I just now that I've seen her all of her patterns like I just I love them so much I love that they're like based off cocktail names. I've still had a plan to like, I gotta make myself a Boulevardier cocktail. I have no idea what it is. Um, but yes, this is like my comfort wear. That's like what I want to be comfortable and cozy and wearing something that I made. Like this is what I reach for. I wore it all the time when I first made it. Um, like probably like solidly all the way till like spring. And then I had a few more sweaters now in my in my closet when fall came around again. So I was wearing those ones instead, but I it's still a very like regular go-to one for me. A um, little bit of pilling also, like I said, with the other one, but overall like really lovely and I'm so happy with it. Um, I might, I wouldn't knit this one again 
to have the exact same sweater with the texture on it. I might knit it again just because I really like the shape of it. And just like with the texture, I'm not sure. I have another sweater sweaters quantity of this yarn in a lighter blue color um, that I'm not sure yet what I want to do with. When the when River City Yarns closed um, their like storefront, um, they sold off a bunch of stuff. And so I bought a bunch of the <laughs> Epic yarn because I really like it. Okay, I don't think there's anything else I want to say about this, except that I, I just, I love it so much. I'm so glad I can finally share it on the podcast. I, uh, I was like, I'm wearing something that I like just finished, right? And so I'm not wearing something that I knit a long time ago. Um, I started watching a new podcast, um, called The Wooly Worker, um, who I've mentioned her before. Um, she's, yeah, I just really like her vibe. And so in her very first episode, she started last January, I think, podcasting, like January 2023. Um, and so in her very first episode, she said like, oh, I'm going to show off my finished objects, which this is my first episode. Every single thing I've knit is a finished object that I can show you. And I thought that was funny because that's how I felt too when I started. Um, it's like, okay, here's my finished objects. Literally everything that I've knit because I'm brand new here and never shown you anything before. Um... So anyways, now I get a chance to show you this finished object. I'm just, can you tell how much I love it? I love it. Okay, next one. I feel like my color is different on my camera here now. It's just like reacting to the colors differently. Um, we'll find out later. Okay, next up, this is the Ember Sweater by Yuko Shimizu. And this was another one that had been on my list in it for a long time. Um, Selena from Dank Fiber slash Wool and Pine. Um, had knit this sweater in these colors and I just like love it and actually I'm pretty sure she sold it at one point and I was like I should just buy it I just want to copy and paste your sweater um, but I knit my own um, it had been on my list for a long time I had bought the yarn um, quite a while ago as like a special purchase after something and then um, it just took me a while to actually like cast it on so I like, wanted to do it this year um, so this one I cast on January 30th, cast off March 10th. This one's a top-down um, colorwork yoke with like some lace and like texture and stuff around the yoke as well. Um, around the like widest part of the yoke is three different colors and so that was quite a thing to do. Um, I made quite a few modifications on this sweater. This is actually the one I was wearing in my first episode. So I think I talked about it quite a bit then. But I, I ended up making quite a few modifications on this one. The original pattern is very oversized and like very like fashionable, I want to say. I'm not fashionable. <laughs> so I just like, I, I wanted to streamline it a little bit, simplify the like shape. Um, and so I made less ease around the yoke and lengthened it a little bit and um, ended up doing some surgery on the sleeves because I had knit them quite long, I guess. It ended up being too long. And then this part, which is just plain stockinette, was like really blousy. Um, and so I like snipped it, ripped out a couple of inches worth, and then like grafted it back together again. And I'm so glad I did. Um, and I... Yeah, I, I am really like proud of this knit. Um, it was a challenging one and a really like interesting one. Um, I don't wear it a lot, partly because it's just like more bold than lots of my other, like other things in my wardrobe. Um, also it's like a little bit cropped on me. And so, which is fine. Like, I like the look of that, um, like, high-waisted jeans, but, um, I find I'm just, like, I just feel aware of it, right? And so, I don't wear this a ton. I wear it, um, it's, like, part of my regular rotation, but it's not a, like, I'm gonna just wear this every single day kind of sweater like this one is. Um, it felt like a, a very, like, very, like, proud knit, I guess, for me. Um, and this one I had originally, I bought the like two of the three colors are the same ones that Selena used, um, but wildly different, like dye lots, obviously. And so the green that I initially bought, um, which is from Olan Fiber Mills, I want to say that's their full name, but the, I didn't love the color. Um, 
and it didn't look good with the like the pink and the purple and so that part of what put this on pause like on hold for me and then last November at a yarn show here in Edmonton then I bought the green I like brought my pink and purple along and I think I brought the green skein along too to like compare and then I found two other skeins of green um, from a local dyer here in Edmonton called New Mana um, and I'm really happy with like what the color ended up being it's like what I was picturing um, and yeah it's like I'm overall like really happy with it um, I potentially would go back and like add a little bit more length on it um, let me show if I can show off the bottoms here it's, it feels so silly in my my heart polka dots pajamas but you know what it's just that's just reality right now so I love this um, the green and purple color work at the bottom and I feel like I could just like add another section of that it just would add a little bit more length um, which I might like but otherwise overall like quite happy with this one um, there's it's this is a good one to just like go and see all the different um, colors that people have chosen like on the Ravelry projects um, there's other ones that are just like there's one that I'd say that's like blues and grays it just like it's just such a different look of the sweater it makes it look like a completely different sweater and that like almost makes me want to knit it again but I am not usually one to knit a sweater twice um so I don't think I will especially with how much like how many modifications I made on this one um I don't think that I would do it again but very happy with with this one and I was proud of myself to get it done and um yeah I'll may I may also try and wear it more now and, like this next part of winter here okay next up is the stone crop cardigan by Andrew Mowry and this was another one that had been on my list for a long time um maybe this was part of that this year it's just like the year of making those things happen I accidentally bought the pullover pattern and then just like refused to spend 10 more dollars to buy the cardigan pattern and so I kind of fudged that part of it I guess a little bit of like the steak and whatever this is another sweater that I ended up making quite a few modifications to um when I was looking back on my notes um I was like what 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 did I do like it just was I made a lot of changes I think what I ended up doing is that I cast on for a smaller size and then increased to a larger size um and yeah just like fudged a few things along the way so this I ended up in Briggs and Little Sport, which is a single ply, quite rustic yarn. That's what the navy is. And then the color work is um, Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool in the colorway Wallflower. And so that's the yarn that's called for in the pattern for the color work. Um, I did not do the bobbles on this one because I was done with bobbles after the Boulevardier sweater. Um, and I also changed the um the part where it had the bobbles in the pattern it's like a little cable um pattern as well that I didn't really like the look of without the bobble in it and so I just added some like pearl texture or whatever there instead and I yeah it just like simplifies it a little bit I think which I liked um this one I cast on March 1st finished May 5th my length of time for knitting these sweaters is starting to grow a little bit as <laughs> like I think probably as I started adding other things to my life again um, in those early grief days I just yeah just did a lot of knitting so this one overall I was like it was a fun knit to do um, it was engaging of just like the little blips like little bits of color work like as you went along which was fun the spin cycle is fun to work with just like seeing how it like changes as it goes this was a fun way to do the spin cycle because you could really see the color shifting as it went along which was really I just really enjoyed that um, I don't wear this like hardly at all um, partly because it's too small I will not be standing up here it's like quite cropped so I will not be standing up <laughs> and this is definitely one to like if I had a cute dress like a cute linen dress to like put under it is what I would wear with it the arms have like no ease and perhaps negative ease and because of the Briggs and Little it's like a little bit scratchy and so it's hard to wear something underneath of it because it's too small um, and without something underneath of it it's a little bit itchy and it's also very warm 
And so I think I should wash it again and see if that helps soften it up a little bit more. Um, maybe try and like block out the arms just a touch more. I had added extra, that was one of the modifications I made is that I like added extra stitches to the arms so that they would be a bit bigger. Um, I find Andrew Mowry's sleeve circumference is quite narrow. Um, and so I like, yeah, I have to just be mindful of that when I'm knitting her patterns. It Maybe it's just the same as like, I'm sure she uses the same like standards as everybody else, but um, it's just something that I've noticed. Or maybe my arms are just larger than like based on my circumference, but like off my bust circumference. But anyway, I don't, I hardly wear this one at all. I wanted to finish this one in time for the knitting retreat in Montana that I went to in June. Um, and so I got to wear it there. I've like worn it a couple of times, but like really I'm not wearing it. Um, which is too bad because it's like, I love how it looks. It just like, is not that comfortable. Um, because it's just a bit too small. Kind of a bummer about that. Um, it's like one that I'm very proud of still, but it's just not one that, that gets worn. Um, I added a ribbon to the steek, but only still on the one side. And I just never got around to doing the other side because I don't ever wear this. Um, but I just, I really like that kind of finishing touch. I'm going to add that, I think, to, um, I have another steaked colorwork sweater that I actually bought this ribbon for that one initially and just like never got around to doing that either. I really like how that finishes off the steak edge. So, so yeah, kind of a bummer that it's not one that gets worn. Um, maybe one to gift, but again, because it's like, mm, it's kind of scratchy. So it's a little bit tougher to gift that to, to somebody, um, who doesn't necessarily have that appreciation for like the woolly Canadian wool that is what makes it kind of scratchy. So anyways, okay. I don't know if there's anything else I want to say about this one. Um, love how it looks. Don't love how it feels. Okay. When I just put this on to the mannequin, I realized that there was a button missing. Like I hadn't, I'd missed one of the buttons. And so now I'm worried that that, that whole section, I had a button missing, not done up right there. I'm not going to redo it. And I'm also, I'm, you can, you might be able to see the polka dots on my bra through this particular top, but you know what? We're just going to roll with it. <laughs> so, okay. This is my next knit of the year. This one is called the Clark pullover by Jane Richmond. Um, it's originally like a full length sleeve pattern, but I just want a short sleeve version. And I, I, I'm very happy with this one. It's just like, it's exactly what I wanted it to be. I love the yarn. I love the fit. Um, yeah, this one goes a, I don't have a lot of summer knitting, like summer knits. And so this was like a really good addition to my wardrobe. Um, it's like too, it's DK weight. Um, and so it was like too warm to wear um, when it's like really hot out, but it was like a really good, um, like a warm spring day kind of top or a cool summer day <laughs> kind of top. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this one, how this one turned out. This would be one that I would knit again. Um, this is the second pattern that I've knit from Jane Richmond. I really like her style of pattern writing. Um, she does kind of like a fill in the blank kind of thing for like, there's a spreadsheet that has all the numbers in it and then just the simplified instructions. So you just like find your number for your size and like fill in the blanks on the pattern. And I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that all of her patterns are like that because the two that I have knit have been. Um, and it just like, it's very easy to um, knit from, which I like. This one is top down raglan. Um, raglans are not my strong suit. And so that was a little bit of a challenge for me on this one. I'm getting better. Um, knit a couple more this year. And so I maybe I feel like a little bit more confident in that now. Um, I knit this in Ancient Arts Nettle Soft DK. And so it's a mixture of merino, nettle, and nylon? Shoot, I can't remember. Let me check. Okay, it's just merino and nettle. Um, I thought there was something else in it, but there's not. Um, this was yarn that I had in my stash. And so that, um, which was not, I have tons of yarn in my stash that usually has a project in mind. This was yarn that did not have a project in mind and I was able to use it for this project. So I always appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I think that is like a perfect yarn for this. 
I like that it has the wool in it. The nettle is like adds a little bit of a different kind of feel and texture to the yarn. Um, nettle is quite similar to linen, and so, um, but I don't think it's as stiff. I don't know. I haven't knit with a lot of linen, so. And like with it mixed with the merino, then obviously that softens it up too. But I think it's like a nice um, weight for like a nice yarn for like a summery knit. Um, they have the DK and then they also have it in a fingering weight base. Um, and yeah, it's, I really like it. Um, I like the colors. I, I, it says Irish linen and then Russian silver blue. Um, and yeah, I think this would be one, this would be a pattern that I would knit again. I like the fit of it, like the um, experience of knitting it. I could like make a full length version of it. I had knit with this yarn before. Um, I made a top for my sister-in-law with it and then I made Beth's baby blanket in it um, but I had never actually made something for myself in it and I have like a, like a little a small collection of it in my yarn stash and so it was nice to um, work with it and I think I bought this on a D stash from somebody else and so that's always fun too when you get I, Ancient Arts is my favorite yarn company pretty much every time I see them pop up on like somebody de-stashing it I try and buy it because I just really like their yarn and know that I will always find a use for it um so yeah this is what I ended up doing with this one okay I can't remember if I said I don't know if it matters if I said when I knit it but cast on May 12th cast off June 1st so it was a quick knit I was working on this while my husband and I went to Jasper for our 10th anniversary um and yeah it was a perfect project for that as well just I was working on the body just like knitting around and around looking through my notes here so I just like I'm going chrono chronologically here obviously based off of when I finished the item this one the next one that I knit was a gift for a friend and so I don't have it here because she has it um I don't know how to say the name of this sweater it is Finnish and I looked it up and it means um uh, like mountaineer that's what the word like translates to and it was originally for written for Novita, uh, which is a yarn company slash magazine, I think, in Finland. Um, I my sweat my friend had asked me to make a sweater for her. I just was like quite thrilled that she asked me. Um, she, yeah, she'd had like some mad money from her birthday kind of thing, and so she wanted to commission a sweater from me. Um, and so yeah, that was just I felt very honored to be able to do that for her. My friend had sent me a couple of ideas of what she had in mind, just like pictures she'd found on Pinterest kind of thing. And so I like promptly like scoured Ravelry for like what we were looking for. Yeah, I had some like color ideas in mind. Um, one of the things is that she can't wear wool. And so looking for like a good, good quality acrylic yarn that like had the colors we were looking for. I like searched high and low to find what I was looking for and settled on Knit Picks Brava Sport, which, um was great I yeah, was really happy with it um it's like I it's not easy for me to get knit picks because you have to order it directly from them from the states um and so I have never used their yarn before um I bought some other random yarn from them at the same time just as like well if I'm paying for shipping then I might as well um you know grab a couple other random things but um yeah I was really happy with that so I used that help double um for the sweater it was bottom up every time I get to like the point where you like you've like knit the body and you've knit the sleeves and then you have to attach them together it feels like it's not gonna work <laughs> so it's just, like feels weird um but uh, and it was also interesting knitting a sweater for somebody else and then I try on things all the time when I'm knitting them for myself but then knitting it for somebody else it's like it just is different um and I did managed to get her to try it on um before I added the sleeves and so we like tried on the body like made sure that it I like did a little bit of waist shaping on it so it was like a, a little bit wider we did it a little bit longer than what the pattern said so like add a little bit of shaping so it's like wider at her hips and like a little bit of shaping at the waist and then wanted to make sure the length was right so that was helpful to, for her to be able to try it on I had all of her measurements and stuff too but just like for her to try it on and us to like chat about it a little bit um and yeah I'm not sure how like it has worn and stuff I've, I should ask her if, like if she's washed it and like how the yarn's been if it's pilling at all um but um yeah it was a good um it was a 
pretty quick knit. It's like an Aran weight gauge it ended up being and so went pretty fast and um, I know some people with like they like to do the top down because they like get to do the fun part at the beginning right with the color work and then just knit round and round but there was also something kind of motivating about like okay I'm starting at the bottom there was a little bit of color work at the bottom but it's like okay I'm knitting this like massive stockinette but then once you get to the yoke and it just like it just like zooms then um because you're just decreasing and doing the color work so that's engaging and it's um yeah it was quite quickly so um yeah that was a, a fun project for me to get to do, get to do this year and knit something for a friend okay my next project is also one that I do not have um this was the instant crush pullover by Hohi Locatelli that I got to knit as a sample knit for Frankie Gray Fibers and so that was a really fun experience too this year um getting to do a sample knit again with the like not being able to like try it on the person um like threw me off a little bit because I just I think I rely on that a lot when I'm knitting and um I do I did feel like I knew enough from watching Grocery Girls for so long about what kind of sweaters Jody likes <laughs> and so I knew that she likes lots of positive ease she likes a deep yoke and so I could kind of like use that to help me go off um like when I was making decisions about about things um it was another one that my gauge was a bit off and so I had to make some adjustments about um sizing and length and whatever and that one was another raglan um which again was a bit of a challenge for me but it was very it's very nicely charted and so um it tells you yeah um kind of just every step of the way um how the increases go it's very specific for each size it's like very well written pattern um and it's knit in mohair held double which the gauge is 19 stitches in the pattern what I ended up getting was 21 stitches and I still found the fabric was like quite open and so I can't quite imagine what it would have been at 19. I was like I wouldn't have wanted to go any larger of a gauge than what I did which is part of then why I had to like make some adjustments I guess on the sizing and stuff but anyways the end result was just like light as a feather it was so squishy and I was like ready to be done working on it because I just was like covered in mohair fluff every time I used it I like had my like added my little like um lint brush to my knitting bag because I would have to like like all over myself and the couch and stuff to like get rid of all the mohair it was like I didn't get a chance to wear it because it wasn't for me right it was for Jody, and so I feel like wearing it would just be like so cozy and like squishy and lovely I handed it off to Jody, um and yeah that was it was a fun experience to do that it was a fun knit um also very engaging with like the all over color work and um I ended up knitting one for myself and so I'm gonna break my chronological order here and skip to that one so just a second okay so this is the instant crash then that I knit for myself and so um because the other one was a sample knit for Frankie Gray Fibers. Um, I had a shop credit for Frankie Gray then because I made that sample for her, blah, blah, blah. And so I very quickly decided that I wanted to just make one for myself, but I wanted to knit mine with just DK instead of a mohair held double. And so I used their DK base, which is like a merino nylon base. And yeah, I, I'm very happy with it. The sample one was obviously like bright pink color. This one is like, much more subdued <laughs> and so um which like fits very nicely into my wardrobe it's the brown color is called walnut the light blue is denim the purple is called black cherry and then this one had multiple color options that I <laughs> switched back and forth between which I talked about a lot in my podcast episodes swapped out one of the colors that I bought from Frankie Gray started knitting with another color that I got from a different uh, like local dyer and then still didn't like the color combination ended up getting this like dark gray um it's an acrylic um wool blend from Estelle and I'm I'm really glad that I made the change I think it suits the suits the sweater better um and and it's it's been good um I have noticed that the like because it's just in these kind of like bands of color work right um so you can like very distinctly see the different colors 
and see how the yarn has been holding up and the um, Estelle yarn is definitely looking more worn um, than the Frankie Gray and it's pilling more um, and so it's not that noticeable like it's not it's noticeable but I'm like staring at it that I can just like tell that it's like kind of it's just wearing differently um, they're both pilling um, I need to do a deep pill like mostly just like on my underarms and stuff right um, but yeah you can definitely like tell that the Estelle is like not wearing as well so that's kind of interesting because it was really nice to knit with it felt it felt very similar to the um, the merino nylon but it's definitely wearing differently so anyways knitting the second this sweater a second time um, I knit this one as a part of Hohe's um, fall knit along this one I cast on at the end of September, finished it at the end of October. Knitting it a second time definitely like was just smooth sailing. Um, the color work pattern was just like drilled into my head and the raglan, you know, raglan shaping went much more smoothly. Um, so I feel more confident now in my ability to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this, how this sweater turned out. Um, I mentioned this in my podcast that I felt like I knit the sleeves a little bit too short. I can't remember actually when I did this. I think in my podcast I had just finished it. I hadn't made any changes to the sleeve yet. They were a bit short and a bit wide and so the pattern is knit without any sleeve decreases but I had added some but not enough um, and so it was like kind of gapy and a little bit short and so I, I ripped it back with the cuff back, added an extra like quick decrease round to cinch it in a bit more and then lengthen the cuff and it immediately felt better. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad that I, it just, it didn't take long, right? Like it's not, it was not a, not like it was a tedious thing to do. I just hate ripping back. Um, but I'm really glad that I did that. It's, it feels much more comfortable now, um, for me to wear and the right length and yeah, it's more comfortable later on my, on my cuffs. This one I've been wearing quite a bit. Like it's an easy grab, Throw it on with jeans, like it, um, yeah, just like fit into my um, sweater rotation really easily, and so I've been wearing it quite a bit, and it's it's like it feels like a another kind of comfort knit for me. I also knit this at a different gauge than what the pattern called for. This is at twenty three stitches instead of nineteen, um, and again wouldn't have gone any looser than that. I like the fabric that I ended up with, and so I. Yes, just sometimes have to do some math when I'm knitting. Um, okay, so back to our chronological order. My first test knit of the year. Okay, very different vibe here. <laughs> this is the Mid Mountain Pullover by the Bluebird Box. Um, this was a test knit that I did this year. Um, I just was like looking... My like timeline is going back to my chronological order. I finished my friend's sweater June 20th and then my next one that I had was the Instant Crush sweater that I started July 4th and I was like what did I do for those 14 days? How could I, 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 I must have been knitting on something but I was knitting on this. So this one I started June 10th and then finished August 15th. So I was working on this at the same time as I was working on um, the pink instant crush sweater so, like that was also kind of funny working on them at the same time because yes yeah, just very different very different vibes this one feels very like wintry and like heavy and dark um and the pink one was very like fun yeah I I think I made a very funny reel <laughs> about about it maybe I'll add it in here if you didn't see it on Instagram I was like I still chuckle when I think about it because I'll, I'll add it in here and then you tell me if you think it's funny or not. <laughs> I think it's funny. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Uh. It's just the, the summer, the summer of Barbie. So anyways, okay. So this is a um, top-down color work um, sweater with like extended color work past the, the yoke. Oh. Hmm. That's my cat. Oh, she just batted something off of my shelf. Very, like, aggressively. She doesn't usually do that. 
top down color work yoke extended color work on the um down onto the body and then i really like how the bottom finishes in the, the contrast color the sleeves are in the main color still but then the bottoms of the bodies in the contrast color i just i think it's kind of kind of unique um the pattern was designed in brooklyn tweed shelter i knit mine in custom woolen mills um mule spinner two ply which is another one of my favorite yarns um and it's local to me which i love i i like the idea of this sweater I don't love the sweater <laughs> um part of it is that i i like zoomed i zoomed through it and in the meantime there was like some issues that were found with the pattern and so i assumed that the issues were because of me um, my gauge was like all over the place with this i swatched multiple times immediately my swatch was my gauge was different when i started knitting which like very frustrating um anna the designer ended up reworking the yoke and I could have benefited from that rewrite. And so it's a, it's kind of bungee. Um, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't sit right. And so I find that I, I if I'm wearing it, I'm like, I kind of like pull it down with my hands and then I like how it sits better because otherwise it gets kind of like, kind of like this. And so I don't love that. Um, I've been wearing it kind of like outerwear, um, and it's warm and cozy which i love um this was the one i was worried about pulling it on and off because the corrugated rib is very tight i don't know what's going on there um i've only done it once before and apparently very it was like very like okay knit pearl knit um it was supposed to have corrugated rib on the cuffs as well but like i said i have to be able to pull up my sleeves because i get anxious otherwise and I was like if I if it is this tight there's no way I'm pulling up my sleeve with that so um I just did a regular um rib for that um one thing I'm sort of pondering which is probably not a good idea but I'm kind of pondering here's my two thoughts is that I might do some sweater surgery on this I'm um, just like re-knit this um the plain stockinette part here with the updated pattern um or i might cut it open and turn it into a cardigan so i don't know i shouldn't say that out loud because i'm probably not going to do it and i'll just have, like thrown this idea out to the universe and then i will never follow through on it but that's kind of thing one of the things i'm thinking about when i first finished it well i, I finished it in the summer i wasn't wearing it in the summer but it sat on the back of my couch until the fall and then i wore it like quite a bit in the fall um it's like on a crisp like cool day out in my backyard um it's like wearing this was like quite lovely um but it hasn't been getting a ton of wear um which is too bad because i i really like the sweater i just don't like how this top part fits me so i should just go back like i said i don't like having to go back and like fix and change things when i'm done the project i just want it to be done and like good um but i would wear this if the yoke felt less spongy so maybe i'll go back and do some some surgery on it and we'll see okay we're almost done next test it um this is the sibling sweater my size by laura penrose um this is a top down drop shoulder very like comfy sweatshirt kind of sweater um i knit mine in sanis garn Piergant. um laura knit hers in sanis garn double sunday which is much softer than the Piergant, i think um but i like really like the Piergant. i was really happy with it i think it worked really well for this sweater it's like definitely one that i will knit again actually haha <laughs> i am just remembering i ordered some on these sales here at the end of the year um because i'm yeah i have a sweater planned for for next year i'm gonna use pure for it um i it's affordable it's like non-super wash it's woolly but i don't find it too scratchy um yeah i really really like this yarn so that was a good kind of introduction to it um one of the things with this sweater is that my gauge was off which just it's a common theme but the big thing about this one is that my row gauge was off and this sweater 
That was not a good idea for this sweater. Laura said very clearly in the pattern, the sweater is graded based on row gauge. Get as close as you can. Um, that was important note and I did not follow that note. I should have. So it ended up being fine, but it just was a bit of a process getting there. Um, I also chose too big of a size. So it's like quite oversized on me, but I wear it all the time. <laughs> and so it's like, it's, it doesn't feel like cute and like it looks like on the other people that I've seen and on Laura, how she like styles hers. But I wear this sweater all the time. It's like very comfy and cozy. Another just like throw on, it's like a little bit long. And so if I just like have leggings on, just like can throw this on over top. I wear it a lot. We've had very mild fall and winter here, which is very unusual for us in Edmonton. And so this, I'll just like throw this on to go pick up the kids from school or whatever. Just like chilling around the house in it. I, I wear it a lot. I'm very happy with it. It's just like, it was a little bit, um, a different, ended up being like a bit of a different style, I think, than what I was envisioning. Um, but what ended up happening is that it is a very like staple sweater now in my wardrobe. So I had mentioned in my podcast that I um, thought that the yarn was going to hold up really well. And I like when I had COVID in the fall, I like was curled up in my bed, like huddled up in this sweater, which I like would not normally be sleeping in my in my hand knit sweaters. Um, and it has, it has been, it's held up great. I've worn it so much. I've had a little bit of pilling just like underneath my arm and a little bit down my side. That's it. The only things that I'm not happy with about it, I, I might add a picture of this instead of trying to show the hem. I did a split hem on it and partway through as I was knitting, I decided to do like a combination purl. So we like wrap the yarn the other way because it can like help make the um, ribbing look more even so you don't like have this like weird stretched out stitch blah blah blah. But what ended up happening is that it looks like it almost looks like I have twisted stitches in my ribbing and I'm confident that I did not twist them but it looks kind of that way and so I didn't notice it until later. Literally nobody else will notice it except for me but I notice it and it's just like <clears throat> It's just something about it that looks kind of off. They just look kind of like zigzaggy. So I don't like that. And then the other thing that I don't like, let's see if I can find it now. Mm -hmm. Probably not gonna be able to. I should show off. This is like the nice like detail on the shoulder of the sweater here. There's some place, see and now it doesn't even matter because I can't find it. There was a kind of like a nep in the green that I, noticed while I was knitting and like didn't pull it out. There was a couple of them. I didn't pull it out and I should have pulled it out because I can't find it now so probably it doesn't matter but every once in a while I see it I'm like oh I should have pulled that out when I was knitting it and I'm worried to pull it out now in case it's like more attached than the other ones were and then I'm gonna like pull, like you know distort a stitch really bad or something. So those are just like user error things with this but otherwise yes this is a a go-to sweater for me this fall I just have been wearing it all the time so okay next up this is the Anuka tank by Florence Sperling this is another test knit that I did um and this was my most challenging knit that I have ever done most challenging of the year most challenging of all time I think it's was a um it's not like there's a lot of knitting to it like it's a tank it's like cropped but it is all over color work with intarsia on the front and i and it's knit in pieces and so you're doing color work flat and i had done that a little bit on color work cardigan for just like you know after the sleeves you like knit a little bit flat so i like had vaguely kind of done that before but never in a big project not like in a whole project like this and it was it was a challenge the technique itself of doing the color work flat and doing the intarsia like the actual steps you have to take to do that are not hard managing all of the yarn was tough and like 
it tested my, my patience and I like knit a few inches of it and I was like, okay, like I was ready to be done. I'm so proud of myself for it and I'm like very happy with how it turned out. This would not be one that I would knit again because it was just, it was tough. So I, I really love the Scout Shawl by Florence Sperling. I think it's just like so, it's so interesting looking to me and it's the same thing. It's color work flat and intarsia. Um, I still want to knit it one day. It feels much more doable now that I've like done this one because like I know what to do now. Um, but just not sure if I have, the, I don't currently have the patience to do that again. Brady's going to make a quick appearance and then I'm going to kick her out because she's just wandering all over the place. I, I knew right away that I wanted to make mine in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. I'd used it before. I had like a random collection of it. Um, when my local yarn shop started carrying it, I was like, ooh, like bought a bunch of it. Um, and what was really nice about that is like doing the intarsia, I had little, you know, the little bobbins, or whatever, hanging off um, as I went. And then when I like ran out of a bobbin, I could just like spit, splice the yarn back together. And so that was really helpful. I hardly let any ends to weave in and I could keep my bobbin small, which like helped like with the yarn management and stuff. Um, so that was really great. Um, and I lengthened it a little bit. Um, the, the pattern, it was like, like I probably, I don't remember how many inches I added exactly. It was quite, it's quite cropped in the pattern, but I didn't like the idea of like this color work band being pretty much like right under my bust. Um, and so I wanted a little bit of extra length when it actually comes down to like wearing it, I find that it's a little bit long. And so I think it still makes the most sense because of like, I need it. I need that space here of like the, this like plain section before the, color work at the bottom just like for proportion wise but um I like if I like have it on a dress over a dress or something it's like I tuck it up into a belt um or yeah like I like it over a collar shirt this one I grabbed the wrong one this one's a little bit baggy in the arms to to wear with this but one thing that I found is like I swatched with this color work pattern and then the rest of it is in one by one and my one by one color work is much tighter, I've discovered, than my like patterned color work. And so it ended up being smaller than, than the size I had originally chosen. It was supposed to be 46 and a half inches, ended up being 44 inches. So that's like three inches of ease on me. And I think the pattern called for about that. It also feels like it could, it could be a little bit tighter. Um, so, okay. <laughs> This is one that I have not yet showed off on my podcast. I was working on it when the last podcast finished, so I'm just going to talk about it a little bit more because I don't know if I'm going to talk about it again in the new year. But um, So this feels a little bit big here. And so I kind of wish that it, it was like a little bit more fitted. But what I was worried about happening is that if it's, if, it's, ooh, if it's more fitted, then it starts to stretch across the bust. And then these nice straight lines are not straight anymore. And... I don't, I don't like that look. I don't need to like draw more attention to my chest than what is already there. So, um, I, I think it probably like worked out for the best of like what ease I ended up with. Um, I don't feel cool enough to wear a sweater vest, which like seems kind of funny because you know, the like, um, I'm thinking of like on Friends, like the early days of Friends when Chandler would wear sweater vests and like they would just make fun of him for his sweater vests. So they're like, they're not cool. They're like kind of nerdy, but I feel like they're like making this like cool comeback right now. Um, I really like the vibe of them. I have actually worn this quite a bit. Um, so I knit this, started September 21st, cast off November 3rd. I have actually worn it quite a bit. Um, I've been like practicing wearing it <laughs> when I uh, don't have to go and do something important. 
Um, so if I'm just like having an at home day, I'll just wear it to like practice wearing it. Or I think I wore it to therapy once because like that felt like a safe space to wear my, <laughs> my cool new item. Um, and yeah, seeing some of the other testers who made it, and it's like, oh, they just like have such a cool vibe about it. And I, I don't feel that way. So um, I did, I've tried it on with a ton of different outfits, um, which was helpful. I am going, I am wearing it because it was so much work and I'm so proud of the work that I did on it. Um, it's not my style necessarily, but I think solely because I don't feel cool enough to wear it. Part of me is like, I don't actually really care about that. I just want to wear the item that I'm proud of that I made with my two hands. That was like a lot of work. And so that's what I'm doing. And I feel very confident now in my ability to do color work flat, like no big deal. Now I got such a rhythm going with it, which I feel so like, I'm, I feel so proud of like adding that to my like knitting repertoire. Um, and same with the Antarja. I'm just like not as excited about that because it was, yeah, just, um, the yarns would get kind of tangled and I'd have to untangle them and they'd be like all over the place and it just, I had to put it away very carefully every time because then they would just get more tangled again and it just, it stressed me out. Um, so I didn't love that, that part of the knitting. One more to go. Brand new project. You have not seen it before. A random bulky sweater that I knit in a week. Ready? Here we go. Okay. My last sweater of 2023. This is the Easy Bulky one by Hohi Locatelli. Um, when I, I'd signed up for a bunch of projects for her fall knit along, this was one of them that I just like threw in the mix um, and randomly decided like, you know what, I'm just gonna try and knit it. It's bulky weight, 12 stitches per four inches. Um, and yeah, I knit it in a week. Um, I knit this in Briggs and Little Heritage. Um, and this is a, another home sweater, <laughs> I guess. Like I wear it a lot. It does not feel cute. It feels like a home sweater. Um, and that's just fine. I knit it long, so it's like kind of tunic length. I'll show, try and show that off with my, so it's like, oh, it's so long you can't even see the bottom of it, see? So it's like goes over my butt. I wanted to be able to like throw it on with leggings. Um, and yeah, I did a split hem on it. Um, I, the pattern just has you pick up and knit stockinette instead of knitting ribbing at the top, but I added ribbing. This is one of the very first knitting patterns that I ever bought. It's been sitting in my library for years. I think I bought the pattern as like my potential first sweater that I was ever gonna knit. Um, and didn't end up doing that at the time, but I, I I feel like I don't know what to say about this one because it kind of feels like a throwaway project. It's like that's the word that's coming to mind. It was, um, I think it was a bit of a depression knit. Um, and I just needed something that was easy and quick and just a lot of like round and round and round and round. And that's exactly what it was. So it was like perfectly fulfilled that need that I had. Um, maybe it wasn't good that it was so quick because I probably needed that longer. Yeah, I think it's another one that's like, I will, I wear it often. It's not gonna like catch any eyes, I guess. It's like, oh, wow, look at your sweater, it's so amazing. Um, but it's like, I, I want to be comfy and cozy. Um, and I think that's just like a lot of what I need in my life right now. So that's what it is. Um, so I feel like I should like be more <clears throat> exuberant about it, but I don't feel exuberant about it. I think it feels like a sad sweater to me. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't quite place it. So, ha, I like, like, oh, I have a new finished object that no one has seen before. Like, built it up so great at the start of the episode. And then, like, just kidding. Joke's on you. <laughs> it's a sad sweater. Um, this was definitely a... My baby's birthday is next month. Um, knit. So, we'll maybe need to just, like, shift my perspective about it a little bit. Because I have been wearing it a lot in the last month. 
I'm like happy with it in the sense that it's like um, a useful sweater for me, but not in the like why I'm so proud of this kind of way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's something there for me to overanalyze later. But uh, anyways, okay, there we did it. That was all of my sweaters that I knit this year. Um, I who knows what next year will hold in terms of how many sweaters I will be making. This year felt like a lot. Um, 13 sweaters in 12 months, that's a lot. I've been kind of like all over the place trying to figure out what my next project is gonna be. Just been like knitting on a bunch of random different things and like changing my mind about things and I needed to get through December and I did. This year was a year of just massive personal growth for me, um, which I um, really, appreciate, I guess. I'm very glad for that. I'm proud of myself for that. It's just like how much I have learned this year. Um, but it was forced upon me <laughs> by really shitty circumstances. I think that I have learned to be more myself this year, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but I could like dive into my whole life's history and that would make sense, but I won't do that right now. I won't do that ever. Um, but, uh, a big part of that has been um, through my podcasting. And so I, yes, I just really appreciate everybody who tunes in. It's been a very positive part of my year in the midst of a lot of negative. And so thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for following along with me, um, for commenting, for liking my videos, for sending me messages on Instagram. Um, I had some people check in with me this month just to like let let them know let me know that they were thinking of me around Beth's birthday it was just like oh what a gift to have these strangers on the internet um care for me in that way like yes just very incredible so thank you um strangers feels like a weird word to use because I <laughs> like sometimes pour out my heart and soul um on this podcast, but I don't, I don't get to hear that a lot from other people back. And so it's, I think when I do, I, I really appreciate hearing from people, hearing people tell me that they have appreciated me talking about my grief. Um, that was one of my goals, I guess, about talking about it and how that has been so interwoven into my life and how that's been so interwoven into my knitting. Um, and so, yeah, I just thank you for following me along in that journey. And no idea what next year is going to bring. Yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no wise words to close this off. Um, I'll just again say thank you for, thank you for being here. Thanks for, um, all of your encouragement this past year. Um, thanks for being excited about my knitting with me. Oh, just I feel so honored that people can be excited about this thing that I'm also very excited about with me. So, yes. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll catch you next time. Happy knitting.